deciding your destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart. Today we bring you the message, Divine Awareness, from the Prophetic Voice Ministers' Conference in Birmingham, England, organised by Apostle Alfred Williams from Christ Faith Tabernacle International Churches. I want us and thanks unto the most high God for giving us this servant of God, Dr. Cecil Stewart. Put your hands together and let's welcome him to the podium. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you. Sing it one more time. Shine, Jesus, shine. Just lift your hands up and let's thank him. Thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory, Father. Thank you, Lord, you're our helper. Thank you, Lord, our sufficiency is of you. We bless your holy name. Worthy, 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 worthy. Give him the glory. He's in this place. Thank you, Jesus. We are redeemed by your precious blood. Thank you, Lord, we have your life abiding in us. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Father. Father, thank you. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for the fellowship of your people. Thank you for hearts that are opened and minds that are clear. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit moving among us. And we pray your will shall be done in this evening service. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. You may be seated. It's a, a great honor and privilege, as I said this morning, to be with you. We are highly honored to be part of this conference. We're always richly blessed and inspired. And the fellowship is just so very, very precious. Let me quickly mention, we do have just a few little hope builders with us. This is one called, It's Time for Change. And these are available on the table somewhere. If you want to take them, you can give a donation if you want to. Uh, it's called Time for Change. And it's very challenging and inspiring hope builder. And there's one also here called The Transforming Power of Thanksgiving. And there are many, many others as well there. Okay, this evening I feel led to speak to you on the subject, divine awareness. Divine 
awareness. And I believe we're living in a time when we need to be more aware of the divine than ever before. Because God wants to speak through us, to move through us every moment of the day. Not just in church, but continually. A while back we had a letter from a representative in Italy and he was sending us a copy of a letter he received from a prisoner. This prisoner in Italy had saw one of our television programs. We do broadcast in Italy several times every week and uh, our programs were going out there for a number of years all over Italy. And uh, he received this letter and sent it on to us that this prisoner somehow had managed to hear our program on television in the prison. And the Holy Spirit made him aware of his need of salvation. And he became a believer in prison and was totally transformed. Divine awareness in the prison. And so I believe God works in everywhere where there's ambassadors for the Lord, there's people who are expecting to be a channel of his divine awareness God will work and God will move. Yes. Ephesians 2, 13 and 14. Ephesians 2, 13 and 14 says, But now in Christ, you who were sometimes afar off are made near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation between us. I'm so glad for those verses. We're no longer far away from God. He is our peace. He's broken down the middle wall of separation. Between us and our Heavenly Father, between us and other cultures and other nations, the Lord is involved in breaking down barriers. Amen? Amen. And we should be bridged bridge builders, not barrier builders. <laughs> you know, in the time of the Troubles in Belfast, not too long ago, one of the first things that happened when the Troubles started, people were being shot and blown up. The city was gripped in fear. One of the first things that happened was people started to build barriers between the two communities. They were afraid of cars coming in and blowing up their homes or gunmen coming in. So they built barriers around their area and tried to protect themselves because of fear. And many people live in fear and they build barriers against the gospel, barriers in case they're offended, all kinds of barriers. But Jesus came to bring down the barriers. Jesus came to bring down the walls of separation. Jesus came down and he reconciled us to the Father and we can now come together without the fear of rejection, knowing that to as many as received him, to them give you power to become the sons of God. We have an identity. We have an identity. And that's what it's saying. In Christ Jesus, we who were once afar off are brought near. He is our peace, who has made us both one, Jew and Gentile, every other nationality who've come to Christ we're one in him he's broken down the separation between us now we can live in divine awareness and I think it's marvelous that we can actually face every day sometimes with challenges sometimes with big steps of faith sometimes we don't even feel like anything's happening we can always be aware that God is with us. Amen. And when you know God is with you, it gives you confidence. It gives you hope. It gives you courage. It causes you to go forward knowing we're not alone. We're divinely aware of the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Satan's plan is to separate us and isolate us. But God's plan is to reconcile us and make us one. Amen? Amen? Because when we're one in Christ and in fellowship with each other, we're so much stronger. Right. We benefit from each other's prayers. We benefit from each other's 
wisdom, we benefit from each other's input in terms of seeing what God is doing through each other, and he gets all the glory. God is not in the business of separating people. He's in the business of reconciliation. And the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5 that we have received the ministry of reconciliation. We're anointed to bring people back to God. We're empowered to reconcile people to God. It says in the 20th verse, we are ambassadors. We are his representatives. And we have the power to reconcile people to God. Hebrews 12, 28 says, we're in a kingdom that cannot be shaken. We're in the kingdom of God. And the whole world seems to shake at the moment. No kingdom is sure. Leaders are not sure what's going to happen in 24 hours from today. There's great disturbance, great fear, wars, trouble, uncertainties everywhere, confusion. But we're in a kingdom. The kingdom of God can never be shaken. So we can be secure and aware of the divine presence of God. And I often say this, in fact, many times I say it a number of times per day, I can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. That's from the book of Hebrews. I can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I can boldly say, the Lord is with me, because he is. And so you need to be aware of divine presence. If you've read the history of the revival in Northern Ireland in 1859, I wasn't around there in case you think I'm very old. <laughs> but I've heard the story of the 59 revival. The churches were pretty dead. One minister of a Presbyterian church said he had only two people come to his prayer meeting. He was very discouraged in a little town near Balamina, if you've heard of Balamina. And so the churches were empty, they were struggling, were seeing nothing happening. But a few people, just a handful of people, got together in a little schoolhouse in a small village called Kells. And they began to call out to God for a spiritual awakening. They became aware of the divine. They had a hunger. They had a divine awareness. And they said, surely, Lord, this is not all there is. There's got to be more than this, going to church and going through the ritual, never seeing anything happen. And as they prayed, just a few people, five or six people, and they began to call unto God. And over a period of weeks, God began to stir and awaken. And the numbers began to increase. And one minister wrote a letter short time after he said my problem was getting people into church a year ago now he says I can't get them out of church he said they don't want to go home to stay all night in prayer the churches are packed there's an awakening now the factories people in the factories are becoming aware of the presence of God in the places of work those who have stolen things are bringing them back people are falling on their knees in, in the workplace and getting saved right in the midst of the factories, in the places of work, places of education, students in university and colleges, they're becoming aware of God. They're calling out to God. And I believe this is now going to increase in our day. There's, co there's coming a new divine awareness over the United Kingdom. I said there's coming a new divine awareness over the United Kingdom. There's coming a new divine awareness over the colleges, over the universities. Often when I drive to my office in Belfast, I drive past the university and I see the young people going in in large numbers and I always, practically always, pray for them. I say, Lord, move on those children, young people, teenagers, move on them, make them aware that you have a purpose for their life. As I see those young people going in, I pray, don't let them be lost, Father. Let those kids be saved. Let them discover you have a great destiny. Let them be aware that you have something bigger than living for themselves, that you have a great and mighty plan. 
And I believe as we do that, there's coming an increased awareness. Everybody say awareness. awareness. Many people live in awareness of the political unrest. They live in the awareness of the faults of others. The news media are aware of all the things that others have done wrong. They keep pointing, up the, or pointing out the faults of the politicians and the shortcomings of those in local authorities. Aware of all the wrong things, but we're aware that God Almighty is still at work. We're aware that God's hand is upon our families. We're aware God has big things in store. This country's gonna come under a new spirit of divine awareness. Let's believe for it that again, people's knees will bend even in the factories as it did in Northern Ireland in 1859. And in one particular small town, there was 20,000 people gathered in a street meeting and people were coming to Christ daily. Crowds were coming to Christ daily. Healings were happening. A mighty awakening and stirring happened from just a handful of people praying in a little school in a small village. They became aware that God is real, that he's the answer to the problems of heavy hearts, of broken relationships, of offenses, and all of the things that are separating people. Jesus came to reconcile us, so we'll no longer be living afar off, but now we would be made nigh by the blood of Jesus. And the scripture says in Ephesians 2.19, we're no longer strangers and foreigners, we're now fellow citizens of the saints and of the household of God. No longer strangers to God's kingdom, no longer strangers to his presence. We're fellow citizens, we're part of the family, we're aware that we are children of the Most High God, and we have his mind, and we have his wisdom, and we must walk in the awareness of this, and count on God's ability every single day. Will somebody say amen? amen. Colossians 2 verse 6, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. We have to ask ourselves the question, how did we receive Jesus? By yielding to him, by surrendering to him. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. And then it talks about being built up in him and nourished in the faith. So we don't stop when we come to Christ. Many people think you get saved and it's just a ticket to heaven and an escape from hell. No, it's a whole new life right now. We have a great mission, a great purpose right here now on this earth. Everything changes. When you come into the kingdom, your eyes are opened. You become aware that you are an ambassador of the kingdom of heaven, that you have a mission and maybe your own family your own community, or maybe other nations, other parts of the world, but every one of us need to live in the divine awareness continually, because God is working in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And then it says in Mark 1, 15, the time has come or fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. I believe this is what the world is going to become aware of more. The United Kingdom, they're going to become aware. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. God's way of doing things, God's rule, divine awareness, and repent. A spirit of repentance needs to come upon the UK and Ireland and Europe. Would you agree? Amen. A spirit of repentance. That our minds will be changed, our hearts will be changed. And that can only happen by a work of the Holy Spirit when you're truly born again. And let me say to those who may be watching on television, there's no other way to come to know Jesus, only through the cross. No other way to the Father. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Ephesians 2, 8, we are not saved by works, but by grace, lest anyone should boast. 
We need to be ready to witness to people who are lost, because increasingly people are going to become aware of the divine, and they're going to ask you, how can I come to know this Jesus? How can I get into fellowship? How can I become a believer? I remember teenagers, we were traveling from the Republic of Ireland where I lived at that time. We came to a, a meeting in Northern Ireland in a place called Portadown. There was a spiritual awakening in that town and we as young people were brought by a neighbor farmer in the car. Some of us had already been saved, most of us had been saved and some had received the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And in those meetings, we were mightily touched. And then on the way back home, it used to be when the border was there, a lot of talk about the border now in relation to Brexit. But this was a time when the border was very much visible. Customs men were there. Every car had to stop. They searched the boot of the car, they opened the bonnet, they opened the doors, they looked in the car to check in case there was any terrorist activity or there was anything being smuggled. The border was very, very much secured between North and South of Ireland. That changed, of course, in recent years. There's no border anymore. But coming back from the meeting, a group of us young people, maybe five or six of us, in a local farmer's car, we had been filled with the joy of the Lord and we were singing that song that we sang this morning, Spring Up O Well, within my soul. And there was such a joy and a sense of divine awareness in the car. And the driver of the car stopped and said, look, I can't come up to the customs officers at the border when you people are intoxicated. <laughs> he said, we'll have to wait here until you're sobered up. And so they were actually intoxicated by the Holy Spirit. And there were, some of them were totally lost in God, just worshiping him. Some were praying in the heavenly language. Some were weeping. Their lives were changed forever. They'd had a divine encounter. They were aware of the divine. And we waited and waited, maybe sometimes for 30 minutes, before we could go to the customs until they sobered up. I believe. It is quite legal to travel while under the influence, <laughs> providing you're not driving. <laughs> so may we also have such a thirst for divine awareness that we won't be satisfied to live an ordinary life, business as usual. We need a divine visitation. We need a spiritual awakening. We need to tell our generation there's more than just material things. There's more than just looking after the appetites of the flesh and doing what feels good. We need a transformation to happen. We need divine awareness. And the scripture says in 2 Peter 3, 9, that he calls all men to repentance. That's what the word says. Everybody is invited to come. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some count slackness, he is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish. God does not want one person lost. He does not want one going to hell. He does not want one to miss their destiny. He's long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He wants a spirit of repentance over the United Kingdom, in our towns, in our cities. And just as God brought that awakening in Northern Ireland in 1859, we're going to experience something far greater. It's not just going to be limited to Northern Ireland, but the scripture says in Joel 2, in the last days I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh. Amen. That means all nations, all cultures, all colors, all backgrounds, all everything. He's going to pour his spirit out. We're living under a cloud of prophetic blessing. Yes. So let's move in faith and be aware that God is moving right now. Acts 2.38, again it says, God commands all men everywhere 
to repent. He wants us to call our generation to repentance. Join us again next time for the completion of the message Divine Awareness from the Prophetic Voice Ministers Conference in Birmingham, England from Christ Faith Tabernacle International Churches. You're watching Deciding Your Destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart. You can watch this program again along with other messages by Dr. Stewart by going on to our YouTube channel. Just look up CCN Northern Ireland. Make sure you click subscribe to receive email notifications of further videos we upload. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook to receive all the latest updates, news and upcoming events. Many people are encouraged by these programs but have not yet been in touch. So please email us today and let us know how these messages by Dr. Stewart and the Word of God that he shares are helping you. There are various ways you can watch our Deciding Your Destiny TV program on TV, online and on demand. Be sure to check out these free resources available for you today. You're watching Deciding Your Destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart. on today's program contact us today CCN 547 Antrim Road Belfast County Antrim Northern Ireland BT 15 3BU telephone 02890 779 552 email ccn at ccnorg.com check us out on Facebook and YouTube and visit our website ccnorg.com